Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and this is our airbag lip. It is the perfect radius and height and shape to launch us up in the air to do tricks onto our airbag. And today, we're gonna be building one for our friends at Fox Suspension. Although this lip is gonna be a little bit different, but kind of the same. They went and bought an airbag last week and they have an event coming up and they found out that ordering an out of the box lip for it, it's gonna take longer than expected. And so they said, hey, you got one of these. Can you build us one that we can break down and take to the event? Now we already built a portable lip, but that one is kind of small and janky. This has to be to like professional grade. So this is really gonna put our building chops to the test. Let's go over to the garage and I'll show you what we have in mind. So first of all, if you're looking at plans for a ramp, they're gonna give you a radius. And in this case, we're using a 10 and a half foot radius, which is great for mountain bikes, great for big bikes hitting big jumps. Oh, Dave! Now, if you remember back to geometry, a radius is half the diameter of a circle. So if we have our circle and we measure across it, that's the diameter, half of that is the radius. So a 10 and a half foot radius would be the curve of a 21 foot circle. Now you can get a radius using a compass, but this is gonna be a really big radius. And so we're gonna use a piece of string and a marker. We're gonna measure 10 and a half feet on the string. We're gonna tie down one end of it, and then we can draw that curve on a piece of wood. So to make sure it's squared up, I'm gonna be using the grid lines in my driveway. See, it makes a perfect 90 degree X right over here. So I can just take this board, put it here, and now I have it square with this line that I can use to draw my radius. So we're gonna be drawing a curve on this two by 12, but I only want the curve to come about halfway down because we want a little bit of meat to keep it strong. So I'm measuring 10 and a half feet from the dot. And then what I'm gonna do is Put a little screw in the driveway. There's a little space between these two blocks. So this goes around there. If we measured correctly, it should line up to our dot. And whoop de doo And that's our radius. So now I'm gonna cut this and then we're gonna use our off cut to trace the other ones. So this is gonna make a lot of dust. So safety first. So we're making one big radius out of this. We're gonna have to cut it down to get it to the right height. So now these lip forms, they meet up just like this, which is what we want. And we're gonna scab them together and that's gonna be how we get two big radiuses. Ooh, this is heavy. Oh, that could break somebody's jaw. So what's gonna happen here, we only want the lip to be six feet tall, but then on the other hand, part of this is gonna meet up with the ground and so it's gonna get cut off. So I gotta make a cut here. So six feet tall is smack dab on the end and 60 degrees is right here. We're gonna cut straight from here. So this is a trick. On a lip, you cut the last 10 inches to a foot straight. And by doing that, you make it easier to do 360s and spin tricks without your back tire hooking on the lip. So as you're taking off, it goes straight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, in college, I took calculus one and two. Was never really any good at it. The math I use the most is I know how to figure it out, but I don't know how to explain it. You get partial credit in college for that. Oscar, are you even gonna move? Just because of the weight of this thing and the size, it's just all going a lot smoother. So we're done with the actual structure of the ramp, but we have a lot of things we still need to do. 
First of all, we have to paint it, and to do that, we have to take it apart. Now, of course, this gets taken apart and put back together in order to be used and transported, and so this is gonna be a little test of how it works. Basically, we have six through bolts. The through bolts get undone, and then the ramp sort of stands on its own and locks together. We then lift all the pieces apart, and it should be three sections. Then we can get to the bottom and the sides and paint it. Oh yeah, how you like me now? Now we're painting the frame of the ramp black, and then we are doing the underside with flex seal because it's gonna be sitting around the dirt and it might get a little bit wet. We're also gonna paint the face of the lip red by the request of Fox. And once the paint dries, there is one more thing that we have to do. To make this ramp done, there are a number of goodies that I'm gonna put on it. First of all, the bolts, the tools you need to put the bolts together, we wanna have those mounted to the ramp included so that anybody can just take this ramp out and not really have to worry about being prepared. And that stuff is gonna live in here. Next up, we have this little pump that was sent over to us. And this pump has a gauge in it and it has a little foot stand. It is better than not having any pump at all. And sometimes you bring an airbag out into a field and nobody's got any tools or pumps. So we're gonna mount this right in here. So if anybody needs a pump, they can get one. To the right of the pump, I'm going to attach this magnet. That is gonna be where the multi-tool goes on. If you could probably lift the whole ramp from that thing. And for after the session, we are gonna mount a little bottle opener in here. Okay, I actually realized one more thing that we have to put on this. Okay, so let's get this thing apart and load her up. Obviously we can't test it today because we're just gonna be on the driveway, slip and sliding on the airbag. I'm just gonna have to test it on site myself, and uh, since you're not there and you usually build every lift you ever hit, second best I was here building it, so let's head to Atlanta and test this thing out. This is a big responsibility you're getting here because I've tested everything we've done before somebody else has ridden it, and so you have to put your seal of approval on it. I feel like this is my redemption for the Kevin jump that you tested, and I'm just gonna do it. I'm confident I'm gonna do it. Godspeed, Kevin. Hope it's not raining in Atlanta. There's a couple of pros out here waiting, and I hope I don't embarrass myself, so. I don't like it, it's wet. Here we go. We go a bit slower than I prepared to. Super solid. I say she works, bud. You ready to put in work? We're gonna try it, Tuck. Yeah. Yeah, you had it. demo setup honestly it's like super solid super easy to set up and it's fun very sturdy super poppy fun setup man I'm, I want one in my backyard now. so Kevin left with an airbag and he returned home with a completely empty trailer. So this was a success. I feel really good about the lip we built. Those guys put on an awesome show and we actually learned something from talking to them. So I build lips for training. You put it against the airbag and you learn tricks. Those guys were not there to learn anything. They were there to shred and they would have actually preferred a mellower radius. They were saying you take the height of the jump. So let's say it's six feet and then you double it and subtract one, so an 11 foot radius. So we were off by six inches um, to get them what they would consider the perfect radius for just wailing at it and busting tricks. I think if you wanna get an airbag, put the lip right up against the back of it and kinda get a lot of pop, 
I would still recommend 10 and a half feet, but you can adjust a radius to whatever you want when you're building a lip yourself. So I hope you learned something today. You can always rewind to the video to get any instructions you want. I'm gonna put the specifications below and thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.